Uh, hi everybody, my name is Mike. I've done a, t uh, a talk here before about some creepy stuff that you guys later asked me about. But I'm, security, uh, it's security. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just call it security. Um, yeah, how to create anonymous Russian style Facebook accounts. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> we're actually going to talk today about uh, Neo4j, a movement to kill the join. That's kind of a weird title, but uh, we all know that movements are all based on relationships, and this one is no exception. Why? Because Neo4j is actually a sort of newish, but not really sort of a way to store data around. So we're all familiar with RDBMSs. Uh, this one here is actually uh, a way to store data in graph format. So if you love graph theory, this is the database for you. On to the next slide. So a uh, couple of things about uh, Neo4j, there's some basics. Uh, what we're doing here is we're actually uh, storing data inside nodes. Each node actually has a set of properties. And then we also have a bunch of relationships which relate each of these nodes. The relationships themselves can also have properties themselves. So we can kind of look here at uh, this particular example. We have a node called employee. And it actually has a number of different types of properties, such as the name, the date of birth, and the employee ID. Uh, we also have a relationship, has CEO, uh, which, by the way, also has an attribute to it, which is start date. Uh, and then it actually has another relationship saying that the company is located in a particular city. So these relationships are actually directional uh, in this type of database. So uh, you have, for example, employee to company to city. But you can also have, uh, you know, like the direction going the other way around as well. Also, another thing which I actually found kind of cool about this stuff is that even though a node is actually an employee and it has a set of properties, uh, each node of a certain type can actually have a different set of properties. So you can actually say you can have an employee over there which says name, date of birth, and instead of employee, actually say has pets. So you can actually have, instead of employee ID, you can actually know that that particular employee has a dog as a pet. Um, so this is sort of the basics of how data is stored inside Neo4j. Uh, Neo4j on a side note is actually Java-based. Uh, it's been coded in Java. So uh, yay to a real programming language. Sorry for the people who actually don't consider that. <laughs> All right, on we go. So the next thing is, what does it look like? Well, when we actually do store data, uh, inside a graph database, it kind of looks like this. It's really a graph, um, and it actually contains a bunch of nodes uh, with a bunch of properties, uh, which are not listed there because I was too lazy to actually put them in there, uh, and a bunch of relationships. Uh, so, for example, um, well, you know, this is, you, you can't really see it, but it's kind of a movie database. We're going to go into it, into the interactive side of things afterwards. Uh, but it basically has a bunch of movies, perhaps a bunch of actors, uh, per perhaps a bunch of directors, uh, and that's basically how it's stored. Um, on to the next slide. How do you query it? Well, it's very simple. You query it as a combination of SQL and Snoopy. I'm just kidding. Actually, ASCII. Um, it, it's kind of funny uh, the, way it's, the way they did it. Uh, you actually query it literally using SQL and something which looks like ASCII art. Uh, so you're literally representing each node with like round brackets, curly brackets for properties and so on, right? It's kind of cool. We'll see it in a bit. In fact, we'll see it now because we're going to get interactive. <laughs> All right. So now if you bear with me here, I'm going to hopefully not go into some forbidden sites that I browse. <laughs> 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 this is not going on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, what I'm actually using here is, uh, this is a website, it's, uh, it's Neo4j. Uh, they actually allow you to have unlimited number of sandboxes. You can play around there. You can uh, create your own graphical data, uh, graph databases. Uh, you can learn about it. So, you know, so I figured instead of doing my own thing, why not actually just utilize what's already there? So that's what we're gonna do. So what we usually do first, uh, this is kind of like the interface right here. Uh, what you would actually do first is import the data. So um, we would import the data, which is already imported, by the way, because that system is already ready, using this stuff. Uh, you can't really see it. I wonder if I can uh, sort of maximize the, uh, if I can zoom in. Enhance. <laughs> Magically. <laughs> All 
All right, so this is kind of like the, uh, the language that they're using. Uh, so I'm just going to go over really uh, here a couple of statements. Uh, so there is a create statement. Um, and then we have this weird, the matrix movie. Uh, so what we actually have here is like, if you see it, it's, a, it's an open bracket. And then the open bracket actually ends uh, right here. What that represents is a node, right? So what we actually have is we have the matrix, which is a variable for that node type, which happens to be a movie, which contains a number of attributes associated with it. So that particular node contains a title attribute, which is the matrix, uh, released on a date, which is the date, and a tagline as well. So what you end up doing is you end up running essentially something which is pretty much, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like ASCII, really. I mean, like you're creating nodes, right? Uh, so you create a bunch of nodes, and then after that, you actually end up creating a bunch of relationships with those nodes. Uh, so over here, if you take a look, you have, let us create a relationship between the Keanu node, which is a variable representing a person node, which has acted in, that's a relationship, uh, which has acted in the following roles within the matrix movie. So you actually see here that the direction of the relationship is represented by the hyphen here, the properties uh, which are preceded by the relationship, as well as the direction of where is it that they have actually acted in. Uh, and then you create this stuff and uh, you, know, you go through a whole bunch of statements, right? And uh, you end up with a database that's graph, uh, that's a graph database. So now let's take a look at some queries. Uh, so let us take a look, for example, uh, that, that by the way is, uh, is a graph database, which is um, like a movie database with a bunch of actors and so on, right? So let us take a look at some, uh, some queries and how they look like over here. So we have, uh, for example, a, uh, you know, let's take a look at movies which had Tom Hanks as an actor. So we're going to pop this particular query in here. And what we're seeing here is match all the movie, I mean all the actors, well match all the nodes of type person who match the variable Tom uh, that contain the following properties. Tom Hanks is a name, which by the way acted in Tom Hanks movies and it just returns the, um, you know, it returns the data we're looking for. So we run this, and we actually see it right here, right? So we see, uh, yeah, this is kind of pretty, it's kind of nice. You can actually move it around, it wiggles, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> it could be fun for people who don't have much of a life like myself. Whee! Anyway, so, so you basically have an actor, Tom Hanks, and you have a whole bunch of relationships. I'm going to maximize this, which, <laughs> there you go. Right? So we can actually see Tom Hanks acted in the following movie. And Tom Hanks actually directed a movie. Right? So this is one way you can query it. Uh, what's another interesting query we can actually have? Well, we can have uh, this one here, which matches all co-actors for Tom Hanks. Uh, so let's uh, do this. And let's execute this and see what happens and we actually have a different display over here it says uh, oh and by the way I actually said co something here but that's uh, that's just to prove that this is a variable really this could be co-actors um, here there you go just to make it uh, there you go right so you have all the co-actors in all the movies where the following people, right? So that's all based on the data that we have imported using that really ugly SQL query. Which, on a side note, um, when you're importing things into Neo4j, you can actually uh, import them from a CSV file. If you have a CSV file which is properly created, there is syntax available, which you guys can look up later on, which says, you know, from that CSV file, import the following information, and then let us query some relationships between that information. Uh, How does and it know, How does it know, like, the, the, like, you know, the Tom Hanks directed? That's actually all within the CSV file that you're importing, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about, for example, where uh, these type of database are useful for yep. and what they are not really useful for, right? Because this is not really a catch-all. It's meant to simplify a very specific use case uh, within, store, within uh, data, right? Uh, and then, you know, you can actually have some pretty, you know, slightly more complex queries like this one, which says, hey, you know what? 
I know that Tom Hanks and uh, uh, what's that guy that had Mission Impossible? What's his, what was his name? Tom Cruise. There you go. Tom Hanks and Tom Cruise actually never really acted together in a movie. So let us see actually who is it that can introduce both of them because they have common co-actors, you know, things like that, right? Uh, so this is the actual query and you can see it here. There you go, right? So you can see that, you know, you have Tom Hanks, while well, Meg Ryan can actually introduce them because they have happened to be acting in Top Gun together, right? Uh, and also Meg Ryan has, you know, had, a, you know, a few movies with Tom Hanks, right? Uh, so this really brings me on to the next side, uh, to the next slide over here, which hopefully is, okay, hold on a sec. Uh, damn it. How do I go back? Help. I need to go back to my slides. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, we're going to skip a couple of these, play from start. So we've seen this. Uh, we've been, where's my, give me a second. Okay, there you go. All right. So what is Neo4j really used for best? Well. First of all, it's really useful for hierarchical data structure. Um, if you actually guys have some experience with querying hierarchical data structures in RDBMS, which is the standard databases that people use these days, or they have used for a long time, uh, you will notice that there is a lot of joins happening, right? And as a result, it becomes extremely complicated to write these queries. And it becomes also, you know, if you're querying on a huge database with a hierarchical data structure, it becomes very, you know, it becomes inefficient. Uh, so Neo4j is really used for hierarchical data structures, or, you know, and, and I give an example here saying, you know, company employee hierarchy, right? You want to query some information about, you know, some people who have worked under certain managers in certain departments, under certain vice presidents, certain directors, and so on, right? Another beautiful application for this type of database is recommendation systems. So um, let us say, for example, that I like meat, so I have bought chicken. So I go online and I buy chicken at an online you know, food store. So it's going to know that I have bought chicken. Therefore, I can probably you know, be interested in also buying beef, perhaps pork, fish, or whatever else, right? So this is actually used for recommendation systems as well. Um, so just as an example, why is it killing joins? Well, you can take a look over there. There's a simple query uh, with respect to figuring out uh, which people work at which department. Uh, and that's actually done using standard SQL uh, versus uh, you know, the uh, Neo4j uh, way of querying things, uh, which, by the way, is called Cypher. Uh, it's supposed to be a sort of uh, graph database implementation independent, right? So you can probably use it anywhere. Uh, you know, so, so, so as you can see, it really makes a lot more sense to use certain things uh, which work best for certain use cases. In this particular case, you know, the hierarchical data structure organization here. Um, so a, a few other tidbits. Uh, you can only scale it uh, ver uh, vertically, really. You cannot scale it horizontally. Uh, the reason why is because of the nature of graphs. Uh, you know, you, like graphs basically do not have a predictable lookup. Uh, because when you're looking up through graphs, if you know about graph theory, you're really you know, looking at subgraphs and, and so on to actually get data out. And you can't really predict where it is that you're looking at and, you know, from, a, from a low level perspective. And number two, there's a trade-off really between the collocation of related nodes on a particular physical location versus the amount of nodes that you want to have on there, right? So that also is kind of unpredictable, right? Uh, so it can really scale vertically, which basically means that if you're using a graph database, you're going to be probably using one server uh, with more and more and more power as it's actually required. Um, second of all, it's really, good for, it's really good for connected data, not so good for disconnected data. So for example, you do not want to use graph databases when you're doing a data warehouse solution. Uh, that doesn't work. Because for data warehouse solution, you, for example, want to have questions such as, give me all of the employees which make over $100,000 per year between the ages of 25 and 35, right? 
So once again, that then becomes inefficient uh, because it actually needs to traverse all the nodes to figure out the answer, right? So we don't actually want to do that either. And that's basically it. So that's my that's the presentation. <laughs> On a side note, I really am not a specialist in Neo4j. We just started playing with it. So if you have any technical questions, I probably won't be able to answer. But feel free. Go ahead. So there's a, a like a Neo Neo4j. Is there a Neo4js for people who actually like the language they use? So here's so, <laughs> and I'm going to answer that because I actually know the answer. <laughs> um, so uh, if you happen to be you know, uh, any other language type of aficionado, there is bindings for JavaScript. There's bindings for Python. There's bind bindings for PHP. There's bindings for Java. Right? So you can basically uh, take full advantage of this uh, using whatever language, uh, well, one of the most common languages that currently people use, which is JavaScript. Right? There's bindings for that, so you can do that. Uh, Sam, please don't shoot me down. What's up? <laughs> Is this whole thing themed after the Matrix? Uh, no, but it can be if you want to. Well, it's got Neo, and you said Cypher, isn't that like one of the guys in the Matrix? It's gotta be, right? Okay, I mean, you, dude, Java. you gotta you gotta email the people who created that, which are. <laughs> the Matrix was in the example. <laughs> 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 okay, the answer to your question is maybe. How's that? C++, I do not know. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there wouldn't be. Well, I would be surprised if there wouldn't be. There you go. Go ahead. Uh, you had a lot of create statements for your data and your relations, but nothing that was just like, this is the structure of my data. So Neo4j just infers the structure of the data from what you have? Or were like, was the graph <coughs> structure already created? So you, 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 okay, so explain your question differently. So you know, like in a relational yeah. database, you'd say, oh, create this table, yep. uh, create this other table, yep. and then you know, you, you, yep. you're joined on a basic yep. key. But I, I didn't see you creating any nodes. I just saw you. Uh, yeah, just, so, saw so, you so you, nodes, okay, yeah, so. It looked like data to me. Right, so once again, like if you take a look at the example that they have there, uh, like on their website for uh, importing data from a CSV file, uh, the knowledge of relationships uh, has to already exist, right? So you basically have to know already uh, how you are relating different types of nodes, right? So you have to know, for example, that uh, you know employee, which is a node, is employed relationship by a company, which is another node, right? So you kind of have to know that. And then when you actually import that, then it creates those for you, right? But you do have to know the relationships. But it creates yeah. it as long as you yeah. know. Yeah, as long as you know it creates them, yeah. But like, you don't have to define like, the, uh, an employee type of node. No. Right? No. No, you no. You make a thousand yeah. different nodes that are yeah. all different structures. Yeah, and really exactly, right? See, and the, and the beauty of this thing is that you can, like, really, this is like you have a node. Uh, this is why labels were created, right? Like for these nodes as well as variables, right? Uh, because you can have a node which kind of, which is, let's say, a person, right? So it contains name, Mike, uh, age, whatever. I look like I'm 32, I know, just don't question, right? And, uh, and let's say, you know, uh, preferred vacation spots, you know, like, I don't know, Hawaii, Florida, whatever, right? And then we can have another node for, let's say, Sam, which has somewhat similar attributes, but actually has a few more attributes than mine, right? So you know, even though these nodes still represent a person themselves, you know, they do have different attributes, so right? Different yes, which is why we are using the variables, which I have actually shown you right here. Uh, let me show you real quick. So you can actually differentiate between, okay, there you go. So uh, let me just do this. Let me just maximize this a little bit. See over here, it says uh, Keanu person, Carrie person, right? So person is the actual label for the node. Right. However, Keanu and Kerry happen to be the variables for that node because they can have different properties, right? right. Yeah. So you can make a person that's totally different. Yes, than absolutely. Totally yeah. Do you, do you yeah. Have, so are templates for a person node? Uh, no. You can make it whatever you want it to be. So like, is one of the reasons it's 
better so recommendations because I guess it's wrong. in a relationship database you have to ultimately know the keys. The keys have to be correct. Sure. But because this is not key based, yep. it can find relationships on its own. Yep. In theory, well, in mm. theory if you code it correctly, yep. that would then give you a better solution. So in other words, speed is going to be better. It will give you it will give you a performance improvement as right. well as a uh, complexity improvement, right? right? So it's going to be a lot simpler to query uh, graph databases within a hierarchical data structure as opposed to querying, uh, you know, your regular RDBMS, which is representing a hierarchical data structure where you have to do inner joins upon inner joins upon inner joins sure. to actually figure things out. Yeah. Property, like there's name, color, select, and yep. color. I would say, I would say hair color. Yes, right. absolutely. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Yes, it will just create you the node with that particular label with the set of properties that you define. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll. Put it out there. Yeah. All right. Yay! Glad you guys liked it. <laughs>